Yeah. No comment. No, no further comments. All right, hey guys, welcome back to the Base Trade TVT. We continue here in the top half of the bracket for the winner's bracket semifinals. Now we did not get to cast map number one. We are joining in here in game number two, and we know that the winner of this best of three moves on to fight against Beyond in the qualifying round. There is a loser's bracket, and we will see two players advance from today, top one and bottom one, but spawning here to determine who gets to fight for that spot in the top right. Playing for Spenu, it's the Red Terran player, Jokshi. In the bottom left, as the Orange Terran, it's Samsung Galaxy's Journey. Although, uh, we might not be able to say these team names for much longer, I gotta say. Uh, with Kespa starting up Pro League again next year, this is their offseason, there's gonna be a lot of, like, mass dislike disbandments and then mass recruit. Well, yeah, plus we, we've already talked about this in private, but there's just the whole aspect that a lot of the Koreans we know and love. We've got to go to military soon. So you're going to lose a lot of the really good players on any of these yeah, teams. Yeah, and all those rumors about WCS next year, too. I mean, basically, Spenu and Samsung Galaxy. Actually. Happy these guys teamed in a couple months. Yeah, and, and backing up just another second, too. I think this is the first time we've cast Jokshi since he's been on Spenu, isn't it? Oh, hell yeah. Last time we seen him, it was my insanity still. <laughs> for sure, for sure. He joined Spenu, and even at that time, it was like, uh, well, he hasn't really been you know, doing well, and he has he actually been practicing that much. I'm surprised he got on the Kespa team. And then he did, like, okay in Pro League, um, but uh, obviously not, like, standout. So we just didn't see him at all, because, of course... Pro League, Kespa, Kespa equals nothing, nothing fun ever. <laughs> well, as this game gets started off, we have a question coming in the chat. Why is it Terran versus Terran only? Because we wanted to be. But also, we just knew that Terran was really overpowered in Legacy right now. It needs to be hella nerfed. So they would just win any tournament anyways. So we thought, why not pit them all against each other, right? Yeah. I mean, this is what the, the Lima Leagues and the Lycan Leagues have looked like. Top 4 TV team. <laughs> Actually, that's... <laughs> Kind of true. Okay, Jock's going to get some nice shots off with the Reaper. A little bit awkward there for Journey. Oh, this is really bad for Journey. He's losing this Reaper fight really hard. Call for backup. Get your big brother into the fight. Second Reaper coming home to defend. Yeah, this is defending, by the way. Like, It's a little hard to tell. Red and orange especially on a Reaper when they have the flames from their back are a little hard to look at, but... Uh, this is Jachi is trying to get damage done, and it will die. But it bought time for you know him not to have to deal with the two Reapers at once. Um, they're on his side of the field now. He has a bunker. He's yeah. gonna have reinforcements. There's actually a pretty important scout with this as well, and the, seeing the reactor come down. You don't actually see reactors come down this early too often. A lot of times you see the emphasis more so on the tech lab, but. Uh, you know, if that had been something a little bit further in, if you would waited five more seconds with the, the Reaper, we may have seen a different scout on that factory. Oh, but, Reaper's already good. Yeah. Again, yeah, that reactor's just going to let him know there's going to be a lot of production. He's not skipping towards a faster third CC or something like that. All that money going into Marines. So, Joshua with his own reactor. Again, this, this isn't too insane. This isn't like the craziest scout in the world, but it does give him some very important information on knowing that, hey, there's going to be a lot of units on the field. I can't get by with just two Hellions. Uh, it's going to be actually a Banshee from Journey, uh, not much else. There's third CC, so a bit of aggression and then hoping to expand uh, behind it. And this this would be a problem if Jachi was setting out for some type of push, but he is also going for his own Banshee, which was barely scouted, I believe. You see a tech lab. Um, yes, the Reaper oh, dived in the side. It was a fake, though. He goes for, well, maybe not a fake. Um, Changed his mind, probably, because it was scouted to go for a Viking instead. Uh, so now you're gonna have you're gonna have um, an interesting engagement, I guess is the best way to put it. Like the cyclone, obviously not too useful for journey right now. The Viking probably won't go all across the field to die to it. Um, but it is a good catch on the early game, as we stated in the last series. The Banshee won't be hard countered by one Viking either, though. So. Um, like the Banshee should do some damage to make up for that Cyclone kind of being a useless student right now. It's a strange investment for sure. Uh, like it's not strange. It, it would have made sense if this had actually been a Banshee coming to Joshi, right. but yeah, it's unfortunately not the most cost-effective thing in the world. This cloak is about two seconds from finish, but there's going to be a Raven waiting to greet this Banshee one way or the other. Turret's on the way as well, and 
Uh, there is a scan available if necessary. It looks like he will scan just by himself more time. So, Josh, you're not going to take too many losses, and more importantly, not a lot of risks here. Yeah, now this has basically been hard countered. The turrets and they're even popping out, so... Didn't actually do that much damage, just simply cost a scan and the cost of the turrets, which, believe it or not, is not so bad. Um, uh, there, <laughs> there are worse ways to lose a Banshee, like, for instance, two Vikings catch it while it's moving across the field with no cloak. That's probably the only way that the Banshee later does, like, no damage and is no help whatsoever. So... Going back on the topic of music, because I was talking about this before you hopped on today, you know, again, love the music for, for Legacy of the Void, but it's so bloody epic and ready for a fight right now. I'm telling you guys, by the time the fight actually comes in, it's going to go back to that really calm, somber music. Like, I really wish there was a way you could control the in-game playlist. Skip, fast forward, trigger epic music, not trigger it, I don't know. I'm sure you could probably do that with, like, a map mod, actually, just thinking on it. Hey, that would be really cool. Like... Like a, like a cinematic experience in StarCraft 2. Yeah, I mean, music adds so much. It's the, it's the last thing a lot of people think about, but music is one of the really... Like, it can change the mood so drastically. But, anyways, uh, that's something maybe consider for... That's too much work for one guy. Yeah, we'd have to have, like, a dedicated observer who could, like, focus on that, too. Because if I'm trying to walk, talk, and chew bubblegum, that's not going to happen. Can you not walk and talk and chew bubblegum? No. Oh. Well... I'll end up swallowing and choking on it because you're not supposed to swallow gum. <laughs> why Why is the phrase like walking and talking? Like, is it really that hard to walk and talk? Uh, that's the point. Like, <laughs> are you so dumb that you can't walk and talk at the same time? <laughs> that's the point of the saying? Yeah. That's how I've always seen it, at least. So, well, okay, whatever. Anyways, so we're gonna have. We're gonna have mech from Journey. Oh, actually, here. No, wait, wait. Sorry, no, it's Stim, but it is a second factory? Sorry, I guess he's going quickly in uh, the, the two, uh, two tank production. Mobby. The okay, armory, though. Second. The armory coming down here fairly quick for... I don't know that you can really afford double upgrades on 2-2 two -two just yet. Well, double upgrades and double factory production? Yeah, I agree. A little odd, but he does have three bases, so you know better than us. I mean, a little bit later on, double factory production becomes a necessity in TBT. Getting right. out this early, maybe this is just him thinking he's got a bit of a bit of time. And that's fine, but it's uh, something he's not going to really be able to super afford. But two tanks might just be what's necessary to stop Jokshi. He's pushing down the map with quite a big force. Both players with even army supply, but of course we can see that's not quite the case. A few more marines here in the favor of Jokshi. And, of course, that really awkward cyclone for Journey. Yeah. Forgot about that guy. I mean, you can maybe lock onto a medevac. Could be nice. Yeah. Well, both of them are getting their 2-2 upgrades, as well as their combat shields finishing up at uh, around the same time. Uh, Jachi also went for a second factory, but just can barely not afford that second tank, as well as medevac production. Gas is not often a limiting factor of Terran, but uh, in TVT it is one. Yeah, actually, it's funny to consider because you, you, we have so many games where Terran players, they don't even bother taking like fifth and sixth guys here a lot of the time. But uh, here it's going to be important. Now, opening the door through the middle of the map, this is interesting. We don't see this get done a lot, but this will give Jock a bit of a, we'll say, terrain advantage. Journey won't even know about this for quite a bit of time. That's true. We have seen that uh, taken, whether or not the rocks are broken down, you can put your tanks up there, and then they, they run past the middle because that's your pathing, and then they get like a two, three blast to the face. It's a lot of free damage. This way, it's uh, more if Jachi has to maneuver around because Journey's not just 1A-ing that he will be able to. Actually, going to go on the offensive here. Maybe he thinks that Journey's out of position. Not really the case. Oh, not worth. Don't do that. Uh, if the tanks are a little more out of position, this might be worth. He's got to pick them all up, though. That secret missile is still going to splash. Oh, the heart of the tanks. That was a good secret missile. Obviously, they didn't kill anything, but if there's a second one, well, at least kill so. that one tank. They can't. Uh, like, half these tanks cannot even afford to unload in range of another tank. It's going to get blown in smithereens. Uh, tanks are going to take out a lot of the Marines from both sides, just trading out each side, but Joshi is running a lot out of steam here. Medivac gets sniped full of Marines. going to go for the drop here in the natural cyclone. Getting some oh, use. Cyclone. It's actually going to kill the Medivac. Oh my god. It was such a good cyclone. He didn't even mean it to be, but it was. So useful. 
All right, now they're on their full production and they're still at very even supply, despite what looked to be like, you know, worse and worse engagement from Jachi. He was still getting, like, Journey kept on, like, moving, uh, like, you know, a bulk of Marines and a tank fire. So, it ended up being a pretty even trade. They're having their upgrades all lined up. They're both using two of their factories now as their gas is, uh, starting to pile up quite a bit, in fact. And Jachi is going on to a fourth base, which Journey also needs to start building. Yeah, that, that base advantage, I'd say it's not even around now, it's like two minutes from now when the mains are fully mined out, when that really, really matters. But uh, now fully aware of the middle of the map being open the way it is, Jokshi's got to be a little bit careful because it's fast for Journey to get through the middle of the map. Uh, scans from Journey, going to see the army moving out, but Jokshi not going to see this coming until it's already past him. Cyclone leading the charge, this bad boy on the front lines. Look at get some shots off, tanks get obliterated on contact. Oh, no. Oh, and Jachi tried to go back home. I mean, he, this, this was the perfect time for Drini to go win. Jachi exactly halfway across. Little indecision now decides to go in for the attack, but that has given Journey a bit of time to get tanks back up. And a, no, I'm sorry, that's Jachi's planetary. There was also a drop of the, the natural for Journey. It looks like he will not be able to hold on to his main. Oh, maybe. Oh, JK he does. Yeah. No. I think it was the thing is, it was, it was going to be a base trade that Jachi would have lost either way, so. Good game gets mm -hmm. called, and we are going to see Journey move on to the finals with a 2-0. He's going to play against Bion in a best of three. I was just thinking I was just playing with